is kind of the end, it's the end of our electrostatic fields. And it is the last concept that I didn't test you on in the last test, or the first concept that we will test on the next one, which is how do we go from a potential description of an electric field to an actual electric field? And how do we, once we know the electric field, how do we determine the change in potential? So that'll be the first material we'll cover. Then the rest of this unit is circuits. Circuits are a great break from these very strange fields. Uh, we'll try to tie in those fields with the circuits. But there are a lot of, I don't think circuits are a lot of fun. Um, there's entire classes for electrical engineers and circuit analysis. And for many of you, it may be something that you end up using a lot more than you think in your future. If you're doing any kind of research, you're going to do some kind of instrumentation. If you're doing instrumentation, you're somehow involved with the circuit. So having some basic understanding of those circuits will be very valuable for you. If you have a car, cars are filled with electric motors and all sorts of different electric circuits. So having some sense of what's going on really, I guess some, some people still work on their cars, but if you wanted to work on it. Um, a lot of mechanics, very good mechanics, still hate electrical stuff. It's really not that mysterious. Any questions before we go on with our high day lecture? All right. Why is it high day? Does everyone know? 314. 314, right? Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us <coughs> the characteristics of a resistor. What I want to emphasize is we measure the potential difference across. If you have a meter, and you, you plug it, your two leads into the common and the voltage terminal, and then you measure the voltage from one point in the circuit to another point in the circuit. Is there an absolute voltage? Can I say that a voltage at any place in the circuit is 14 volts? That's kind of like saying the potential energy of the ball is 14 feet. 14 feet above the floor, 14 above sea level. There has to be some reference. So we might say it's 14 volts above the ground voltage, there being a reference. But normally we'll talk about voltage across. Circuit people, people analyzing circuits, get very lazy. We'll say the voltage across resistor. A lot of times physicists will emphasize this by putting a delta here. But circuit people will almost always leave that off. It's implied that that voltage is measured across the element. When we measure the current flow, <coughs> the flow of electric stuff, as we call it in the lab, we're measuring what's going through the circuit element or through an area. In a wire, we're talking about what's going through the cross section of the wire. And we're talking about the rate of change of charge through that element. And then we talked about the physical properties of a resistor on Monday and a little bit on Wednesday. Most property, most materials have a fairly constant resistivity, especially at a constant temperature. There is some temperature sensitivity, as you saw in lab, in the light bulbs. But for our resistors in our circuit, the ones with little bands on them, they have very little temperature sensitivity. And so we can say with some confidence that the voltage equals the current through the element. The voltage across the resistor will equal current through the resistor times its resistance. So charge is the QDT, <coughs> what's the rate at which charge is flowing through that element. It can be, it's an instantaneous quantity, when you describe it like this. And at the DC circuits we were looking at in the lab, they were, for the most part, in steady state, so the current wasn't changing. We will look at circuits that the current changed. What, what circuit did we look at in lab where the current changed? I'll give you a hint, it was the real long one. The capacitor one. When you first plug the resist the light bulb in series with the capacitor, the light bulb lit up, and after a while it went off. So the current was obviously changing. We will look at how we analyze circuits with resistors and capacitors. And at that point in time, this rate of change of current is going to become important. Now, let's 
talk about one more thing, potential energy. How does that change apply to the circuits? Well, what is the rate of change of energy? Remember, we talked about it very briefly in physics one in my section. <coughs> change of potential energy. <coughs> if the voltage is constant, and what's the rate of change of current through our device? The current, or the rate of charge of car charge is current. So the power in an element will be the voltage times the current. I have a question. Do you mind if we use E for voltage or <coughs> on the application? If you use E for voltage, I prefer you put an MF down here. Okay. Or use a big use kind of a script E. Okay. To keep it track from energy. So the, that's this is meant to be energy though. So some people, old circuit people used to call the voltage the electromotive force. It's not a force, so the, we've gone away from using that. And so they use that script E for voltage. If you do that, I'll know what you're doing. Okay. So the power in an element is the voltage across it times the current through it. The voltage is equal to the current times the resistance, so this could be I squared R resistor. Um, the units here are watts. I'm going to talk about one more thing with power. In a battery, we have a voltage positive and negative. <coughs> the current is coming out of it. The current is coming from the positive terminal. The power from that generator, or that uh, battery, is V times I, and it's being generated. So the current's from the positive terminal. <coughs> Chemical energy is being converted into electrical energy. In a little bit, we'll see how an electric generator converts generates electricity. Again, the positive current will be coming out of the positive terminal from a, for an electric generator. And we'll be talking about how the fields inside of a, a motor generate electricity. That'll be unit three. And in a battery, the chemical energy is being consumed. Let's contrast that with a resistor. <coughs> Notice up here, the current's coming into the positive terminal and out the negative. Now, power still equals V times I, but it's being, power is being consumed. Chemical 
chemical batteries, they create the power. Energy is being created a certain amount of watts or number of joules per second. That energy, if it's connected to a resistor, is being consumed by the resistor and the light bulb. <coughs> Would it be like negative usually then? Power? If we, we will oftentimes consider this negative power because it's being consumed. This is being, will be defined as positive. So if we define positive as our element creating energy, then this would be positive. This would be negative. <coughs> but the key thing is, if you see current coming out of the positive terminal, what that means is somehow those positive charges are being lifted up. What's the field inside here? The field is pointing from positive to negative, right? If we put a positive charge there, which way does it want to go to reduce its potential energy? It wants to go down. So there's something in that device that's giving that positive charge potential energy. So something generating energy. In the case of a battery, that's chemical energy being converted to electric. In this case, which way is the electric field inside that resistor? Downward. The positive charges want to go in this direction, right? So that potential energy is being used up. What's the resistance that's slowing things down? That is, there's not a clear path through that resistor. So the positive charges are bouncing into the molecules. As they bounce into those molecules, their kinetic energy gets converted into macroscopic kinetic energy, or microscopic kinetic energy for the molecules, which we consider heat. So the temperature of that resistor will get hot. If you touch some circuits, and you touch some of the resistors, they're sometimes quite hot. You can at least feel them as being warm. When you charge your cell phone, <coughs> if it is, it's gone down pretty close to zero and you charge it, when you pick it up, doesn't it feel a bit warm? So that is the internal resistance warming up your phone. So we have voltage across, current through, if we take the product of those, that is the power. If we wanted to know how much energy is being consumed, and we knew that there was, say, two joules of power, I mean, two watts of power for four seconds, we could multiply the energy, if we go back to this equation here, the energy would be the integral of the power with respect to time. If the power is constant, that would just be power time. So if you had, that's real interesting in trading. Very bright people. They trade, they talk about I'm going to buy 25 megawatts of energy delivered. So 25 million meg, 25 million watts of energy to be delivered next month. Well, that's a power thing. It's 25 megawatts for an entire month. So the month is, you know, 30 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes per hour times 60 seconds. So it ends up being a very, very large number of joules. So they don't want to talk about that very big number, so they actually talk about megawatt months. They get really lazy and say 25 megawatts in, for May. So they use the wrong, they call it energy, but they always use the wrong units. Trade. So I would grade them in their loose points. All right. There's theory. Let's have some fun. Let's analyze some circuits. Oh, um, let's imagine, oh, for Monday, there's going to be a quiz. I'll tell you right now, it's going to be circuit elements, all right? What is this? Battery. All right, that's plus five. Good. All right? What's the difference between this and this, just for curiosity? Technically, this would be two cells or multiple cells. We we'll see both, just take battery. Don't worry about it. This might be two batteries, but don't worry about it. There's at least some number of batteries. In fact, what does battery mean? If you look back to the, it means a number of, a whole group of cells. Right? So a single battery seems like a misnomer, but that's how our language is going to become. Um, now, what I want to do is connect. circuit. 
Now this becomes a little more confusing because there's now some junctions. What happens at a junction? Whatever charge flows in at a junction, What goes in must come out. In physics, there's a lot of goes into is equals goes out, goes out as laws. This is one of them. It has a special law name. It's called Kirchhoff. Potential energy is decreasing, right? That would imply that there is a little bit of change in voltage from here to here, doesn't it? Well, there really is. The potential here is ever so slightly higher than there. And there really is a little bit of an electric field in that wire. But it takes such a little electric field to make current flow through a conductor that we neglect the resistance. <coughs> In reality, there's a little teeny bit of resistance in these wires, but for the most part, we'll ignore that in a circuit. If it becomes relevant, then we'll actually add a resistance in that element. So what we're doing is we're saying the resistance in that wire is so low that we're going to neglect it. And we're going to assume that it's essentially has zero resistance, so there it takes for an infinitesimally small resistance. So it takes an infinitesimally small field to make the charge flow. Right. So, if that's true, what do we know about the potential everywhere on this wire here? It must be the same. And what about the potential every place on that wire? The same. So whatever potential we have for this battery, it must equal the potential across the battery. law, we know that I1 equals voltage across to resistor 1. 
which is just the voltage of the battery across resistor 1. And I2, likewise, Now, this is the exciting part that's coming here. What is the current being deli delivered from the battery? You, use, you can use Kirchhoff's junction law, right? Or what I call it goes into equals goes out a law. Yeah. So I, <coughs> the current coming into this junction here, must equal the current out. So I must equal I1 plus I2 equals V over R1 plus V over R2. We can factor out the V, can't we? Place that circuit. With an equivalent resistance. I want to replace those two bit two resistors with an equivalent resistance. The circuit would look like this, wouldn't it? We have our battery. We have some current delivered by the battery times our equivalent. In this instance, what is our voltage, a relationship between our voltage and our current and our equivalent? Isn't it V equals I, our equivalent? So what is our equivalent equivalent to in terms of R1 and R2? We could go over here and say I equals V over our equivalent. Doesn't that tell us that 1 over our equivalent? must be equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that lab? That's a direct, it's not its own law. It's just an application of Ohm's law. But it is worth knowing for parallel resistors makes two resistors parallel? They have the same voltage across them. Did that didn't make sense? So here we had I equals um, V times this number here. Down here we had V equals I equals V times 1 over our equivalent. This current has to be equal to that current. So, and V equals V, 
So that means that 1 over r equivalent must be equal to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. So it doesn't equal the magnitude of r1 plus r2 equals the inverse? It's 1 over r equivalent. If we take i here, let's go ahead and put this up here. i equals v times 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 equals v times 1 over r equivalent. Let's get rid of the i and divide both sides by v. We're left with 1 over r equivalent plus 1 over r1. Yeah, the math makes sense. At least I thought r equivalent was like the magnitude of r1 plus r2 added together. And then it doesn't make sense. No, not when they're parallel. When they're parallel, they add up as inverses. Okay. Let's do the same thing now with series resistors. So parallel, what's the key thing? Parallel resistors, there's the same voltage across both. You can actually extend this, and if you want to do it, you can do it in a very similar way, and say that 1 over r equivalent equals 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3 ad nauseum for as many resistors as in parallel. in series. Now, is there the same voltage across both resistors? What makes the resistors in series? There's the same current through them. circuit with our equivalent. So I have the same battery delivering the same current. What resistance is equivalent to these two resistors that are in series? It'll be R, it will be R1 plus R2. We need to Add another law, though. Electric fields are conservative, so the path from one point to another point doesn't matter. The amount of potential energy we change as we move from one point to another does not change. And then if we return to the original place, we should end up with the same potential energy as we started. So if we go around a loop, what should our change in potential energy be? Zero. Zero. So what should our change in potential be? Zero. So if we start here at the bottom of this loop, now we go up some amount of potential when we go through the battery. Then we go down an amount of potential for one battery, or resistor, and down another amount of potential until we come back to the beginning. What should the sum of those potential changes be? should be zero. If we sum the potential changes around any loop in a circuit, we should end up with zero. That has a nice name. 
our junction law was Kirchhoff's junction law. Our loop law will be Kirchhoff's loop law. definition of power, Kirchhoff's junction law, Kirchhoff's loop law, we can prove a lot of things. And we can analyze some very, very complicated circuits. <coughs> and with this information, we can now prove that R1 plus R2 will be the same as R1. <coughs> Negative to positive. Then I measure this, it might be 8 volts. 
and then across this one it may be four volts. Okay. So I go up 12, down 8, and down another 4, end up at 0. So once you get to that slap, at that point, right anywhere along that wire, up is all 0. That's all the same potential. This is all the same <coughs> potential. Yeah. This might all be the same potential. Okay, and we're saying it's zero at the bottom? We're saying no. It could be that this, if we ground this, this could be zero, 12, eight relative to zero, or four relative to zero, in which case the voltage change from across the battery is 12 volts. The voltage across this one is 12 minus four, eight, and across this resistor, four minus zero, four. But it could also have been 20, 32, uh, 24 volts relative to their vehicle. Still, the change across the battery is how much? Well, the change across this resistor is 32 minus 24, 8. The change across this resistor, 24 minus 24. Remember, voltages are relative. So we don't know, we have to choose a reference point. If we ground it, then we'll say that point is zero. But until we ground it, um, we can only talk about the voltage change. It's the voltage change across this battery, the voltage change across this resistor, the voltage change across that resistor. Does that clarify? Yeah. You, that's, that is a key, key concept. We're thinking about replacing one of the labs with just measuring voltages across resistors try to drive this point very home, very clear. Because it's easy, easy to confuse this. People want to say the voltage someplace is 14, or relative to what? We really talk about voltage changes across the elements. The voltage change from one point to another point. The only time we can talk about an absolute voltage is if we declare what the reference is. Is this voltage change we're talking about different from the potential we get when we integrate electric fields? The very same potential. All right, so when we were going, if we use Kirchhoff's loop law to analyze this circuit on the left, and we found that V was equal to I times the sum of R1 plus R2. Let's apply Kirchhoff's loop law to the equivalent circuit where we replace the two single elements with a single resistor. So we're going to call out the equivalent of these two series. And the mystery now is what is that equivalent resistance? What is the equivalent resistance of these two series resistors? So let's apply Kirchhoff's law. Oh, I forgot. Which is the plus and which is the minus? Plus. Is this plus or minus? Plus. Current goes in the positive, out the ne negative. All right, now, let's start here again. We go up V to the battery. Now we go down through our equivalent. And we're back to where we started, so the some of those voltage changes is zero. And we find that then V equals I, our equivalent. We can now say V equals V.
Isn't that exciting? We proved those two things we used in the lab. From Kirchhoff's current law or loop law, Kirchhoff's loop law and Ohm's law. Isn't that great? All right, now, what we're going to do is learn to analyze circuits using these laws. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to expand it. We're going to look at first circuits with one battery and multiple resistors. The easiest way to analyze those is typically to find the equivalent resistance. And so what we'll do is we'll start replacing resistances with equivalent resistances. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have more than one battery in the circuit. In which case, we don't have a law for combining batteries. Actually, there is, but you guys aren't going to learn it. It's called Thevenin equivalence. Um, take electronics, and it's a lot of fun. Um, but what do we do then? What we'll have to do is have multiple loops. We'll have to apply Kirchhoff's loop laws. We'll have to combine that with Kirchhoff's junction law. And what we'll do is we'll get multiple equations multiple unknowns, but we'll be able to solve those circuits and figure out what's happening. So we'll apply the loop law consistently, we'll apply the junction law, and we'll be able to solve circuits with multiple batteries, multiple circuits, multiple uh, resistors. Then, we'll start adding capacitors and see what happens when we add a capacitor to a circuit and how do we analyze it. So that's our goal for the rest of today and all of next week. Then you'll go on spring break. I will not assign any homework over spring break, but we will have a test on Wednesday after spring break. So it might be prudent to do some studying. I will give you a couple, I'll give you homework right up through probably, I'd probably give you homework through Saturday of spring break, but if I were you, I'd get it done next week, during the week. We can talk about it on Friday then. Spring break can be spring break. I don't like giving homework over break because it's supposed to be break, right? Let's rest. So, does everyone know where we're going now? All right, so let's do it. Let's look at first how do we reduce circuits with equivalent resistances? Um, let's try cross circuit first. Omegas here mean ohms of resistance. Resistors. There's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. What is the equivalent resistance of this? Well, let's see, are they in parallel or are they in series? Both. Both. Oh, so, oh dear, what do we do? <coughs> Can we find at least two resistors that are either in series or parallel? Let's see, are these two in series? No. Are they in parallel? No. What about these two, are they in parallel? Yes. yes. Oh, because we've got this thing in the middle. Oh. <laughs> They're not in parallel yet. What about these two, are they in series or parallel? Series. series. They're definitely in series. There's the same current flowing through those. So we can find an equivalent resistance of those two, can't we? What is the equivalent resistance of these two here? Six ohms. Six ohms. So we can replace those now. Six ohms here. With one six ohm resistor.
So now, this circuit is equivalent to that circuit. Because we've replaced these two with the 6 ohm resistor. So these 2 ohm and 4 ohm resistor are in series. There was the same current had to flow through both of them, so they must be in series. So we can replace them with a 6 ohm resistor. Now, what do we notice? It's parallel. Those two are now in parallel. So what is a 6 ohm resistor in parallel with a 6 ohm resistor? six-ohm resistors is having some cross-sectional area. We just doubled the cross-sectional area, so we have the resistance. So we now replace those two six-ohm resistors with a three-ohm resistor. Again. Series again. Yeah. A 2 ohm and a 3 ohm in series is the same as a 5, five. five ohm. You don't have to draw them every time once you get good at it. I usually would draw a couple of them, intermediate. And the reality is, is I did a lot of, I, went, I am an electrical engineer by training. I took two years of circuits. I, mean, I took circuits and so it was like I dreamt circuits. And so um, <laughs> I found that I made the fewest errors if I just drew every one. So if you want to get it right, it's not that the paper's pretty cheap and it doesn't take that much time. If you get it right the first time you're done, you go home. So let's see, a 2 ohm in parallel with a 3 ohm. Let's see, that was a 5 ohm. If I drew that 5 ohm up here, would these still be in parallel? Do they still have the same voltage across them? They do. It's harder to see, so I'm not going to do it. But be aware that that could be done. Probably. Look at, look at what you're dealing with. So 2 plus 3 is 5. I actually gave you a circuit. And the homework that looks like this. What do we know about these two resistors? They have the same voltage across them, don't they? Does it really change if I drew them like this? No. no. So don't, if you rewind, sometimes it helps to redraw them without the silly configurations that are in the examples. So, Think about it. The key, key issue is if they have the same voltage across them, they are in parallel. It doesn't matter if the resistor is here, this resistor is here, here, or here. It doesn't matter if they're shaped like a triangle. If they have the same voltage across them, they're in parallel. If they have the same current through them, they're in series. We now have a 5 in parallel with a 5. 2.5.
that's the whole thing. So instead of making that original horrible circuit, I could get one four and a half ohm resistor and be done. It could be that we're running different, we might be running a, some kind of lighting system. And those are my Christmas lights. And I want each of those light bulbs for some reason to be configured in that way. The reality is most of the circuits configurations you're going to see have no real application, but they do teach you how to act, analyze circuits. <laughs> now, the only way to teach you circuits is just to do them, do them, do them, and then it makes sense. Um, it's not too bad, is it? It's kind of fun, it's kind of fun in a perverse way. Isn't it? <laughs> Actually, you know what? It's only about two minutes. Apologies. 